Hi boys and girls, I'm the reading teacher. Does this look a little different to you? Well, my kids kicked me out of my reading studio upstairs, so I'm down here, but I still wanted to share a great book with you. First, I have a question. Did you know that the more you read, the better writer you become? That's right. The more books you read, the better writer you become. I want you to think about why that's true. Pause the video and maybe give an answer to somebody near you, a teacher, a parent. Why do you think the more you read, the better writer you become? Answer it. I would have loved to have heard your answers. Some of you may have said things like, well, when I read books, I hear other authors' word choice. Or when I read books, I hear how a perspective can change between this character and that character, and conversations can go back and forth, and you might try that in your writing. Some of you might be readers and think, wow, I like how his voice comes out when he's writing. And all those are great, great answers. Today, we're gonna to talk about word choice and why that is so important in a story. And I'm gonna read a great book to illustrate my point it's called Stella Luna. Stella Luna is one of my favorite, favorite books. In fact, sometimes I still get a little weepy when I read a certain part of this book. It's by Janelle Cannon. Now, good readers, before they even open the book, start thinking, don't they? And we can think that maybe this Stella Luna is this bat. We don't know, is this going to be fiction or nonfiction? Are we gonna learn about bat facts in this book? Or is this bat going to be a character? And we're gonna find out what happens to her. Let's see. Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. Now, I want you to really pay a lot of attention, a lot of attention to the beautiful pictures that Janelle Cannon illustrated this book with. She is a beautiful illustrator. Not only are her illustrations beautiful, but pay special close attention to the word choice that she makes on each page. In a warm and sultry forest, far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape, but the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. The dark leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's tiny feet. Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer, down, down again, she dropped. Flump. Stella Luna landed headfirst in a soft, downy nest, startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Stella Luna learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept all night. 
She ate bugs, even though they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing, Stella Luna still liked to sleep, hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet to gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're all going to fall and break your necks. The birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped Stella Luna. You are teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night, and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. Except she's not a really a bird, is she? She's a bat. By the way, did you decide if this was a fiction or a nonfiction book yet? Yes, it is fiction, although we are learning some interesting facts about bats, aren't we? All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too. Pip Flitter Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same. <laughs> How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. The next day, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We'd better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three anxious birds went home without her. I want you to think, why is Stella Luna able to see so much better than these birds. Hmm, let's think about that. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promised not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed. So she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sound of wings coming near. Hey! A loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down, you are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs, so that makes you upside down, the creature said. I'm a bat. I am hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Do you think this is why Stella Luna was able to fly so much further ahead of the birds in the dark? Because bats can see much better in the dark because that's when they fly in the dark. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird maybe, but not for a bat. More bats gathered to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate b, b bugs stuttered one. You slept at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked, sniffing Stella Luna's fur, she whispered. You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. That's the part that always makes me so sad every time I read it. And not sad in a sad way, but happy sad. Because I could understand how the mother bat would be feeling so relieved to have her baby back. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said mother bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. 
you'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we'll crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into this deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. Soon the bats found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap. The next day Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they can eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leaped from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. I shrieked Flap. They're going to crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, said Stella Luna. Then she sighed. Oh, I wish you could see in the dark too. We wish you could land on your feet, Flitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike? Mused Flitter. How can we feel so different and be so much alike? Wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery. Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna, but we're friends. And that's a fact. At the very end, Janelle Cannon adds bat notes. So there's really interesting information about bats in the very back of the story. Wow, isn't that a great story? So did you love the pictures? Weren't they beautiful? How many of you paid really good attention to the word choice that Janelle Cannon used? I'm gonna go back and reread a few of the pages and we're gonna talk about the words. Let's read this page again. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Friends, the word choice that Janelle uses here is beautiful. She could have said, one night there was an owl and it flew to catch the birds. But that wouldn't have sounded very nice, would it? Listen again to what she says. On silent wings, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bats. Even her use of swooped. I mean, she could have said all the other things. On silent wings, the powerful bird flew down upon the bats. But again, swooped, it's such a great word. How about this one? Wrapping her wings about her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. The words trembling with cold and fear make it so that we can really understand what Stella Luna is feeling. We know she's scared. We know she's cold. I really think that when you're writing this week, you can try to add some great word choice. Instead of using the word nice, for instance, what could you write? That flower is pretty. What could you stay and say instead of pretty? Or, I'm going to a friend's house. We will have fun. What could you write instead of saying fun? Think of some good ideas, write them down, and send them to me. I would love to hear your great stories. In fact, my daughter had an idea. She wanted me to ask you what we should read next. Here's the choices. Princess and the Pony or Lost in the Woods. You can put your choice in the comments below. 
and I will choose the one that gets the most votes. All right, friends, do a good job reading this week. Do a good job writing this week, and I'll see you soon.